my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Well, let us begin this 10 minutes of conversation with Jesus looking at the last paragraph, just last line really, of today's Gospel, of today's Sunday, Sunday Gospel. And it reads like this. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, mammon is an old word for money or riches. So that is our Lord's summing up of today's gospel, really, that we cannot be a servant of two masters. We will love the one and hate the other. So really, two are impossible to serve. By saying this, our Lord, our Lord is telling us that we have only got one God. We can only adore one and worship one. In other words, let us not say, I love money and I also love God. Our Lord is trying to help us to be sincere with ourselves. You just cannot say that. You have to say, if I say I love money, well then I also have to say, well, money is my God. Now, the, you know that there are seven, what they call seven capital sins, meaning really capital, meaning that they're the head, the, 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 the head, the caput. They're the head of all sins, all, all the other sins kind of flow from them. And one of the famous seven deadly sins, as they're also known, is avarice, being avaricious, this overwhelming desire for money and of course that means what money brings which is possessions so avarice is this this vice this condition of the soul which makes it to be consumed by the desire for riches and in fact when we look at the first reading of today's mass the first reading always ties up the gospel and in fact, if you're kind of wondering, if you're listening to the gospel and say, well, what is that about? A very good tip is to go to the first reading of the Mass and look at what that is about, because that will give you a good uh, kind of take on the gospel. Not so with the second reading. That's on a kind of, it's on a, a tra trajectory of its own. But the first reading does give us a good idea of what the theme of the gospel is all about. And today's first reading is rather dramatic. It's from... Amos, one of the Old Testament prophets, a bit of a hard hitter. And he is taking on the avarice of his time. And he's giving out about those who are consumed by money, the desire for money and riches, so consumed by the desire that they, they swindle and cheat and abuse others in their efforts to get uh, their the shekels out of the pockets of others and into their own pockets. So Amos, you see in the first reading of today's math, he really lays into them. He lets them have it. So it's a picture a picture of the avarice that our Lord is talking about in other in other ways, of course our Lord is addressing the same problem. He's talking about this avarice that makes us serve, or even in other translations, to be a slave of money, to be a slave of riches or mammon. Because that's exactly what it does. We think we own the money. But in fact, if we fall into that vice of avarice, money owns us. It kind of pushes us around, gives us orders. You do this, you do that. Uh, it becomes our master. To be a servant or a slave, it says in the, in the Gospel in some translations, to be a slave of God is not really to be a slave. Is of course, God doesn't have slaves. He doesn't need slaves. What he has are children. So the option really is to be a servant or slave of mammon, money, or to be a child of God. They're two very different things. That's what our Lord is saying to us in, in that gospel. Warning us, don't let the desire for money consume you. 
don't be consumed by the desire for riches because you think you own the money but in fact it owns you you think you own that lovely dress or that lovely car however that lovely dress or the lovely car owns you when I was a child um, I remember being told by one of my big sisters uh, the typical thing I suppose that the Irish kids might be told by the big sisters uh, that uh, at the end of the rainbow there was a crock of gold okay sounds a little bit typically Irish but anyway I was told that as a kid by one of my big sisters yes at the end of the rainbow there was a crock of gold and of course lo and behold soon afterwards because in Ireland rainbows are pretty frequent uh, things and uh, soon soon afterwards I did see of course a beautiful big rainbow and the end of the rainbow was as it appeared just at the top of our garden so I said wow this is my moment crock of gold coming my way so I, I quickly ran towards that uh, the end of the rainbow where it seemed to be in the, the top of the garden and what did I do of course it pulled back a little bit to pull back to the to the end of the garden I kept going I was very young I kept going and then the the end of the rainbow slipped into the field just adjoining our house and I, I, I went as far as the end of the field and by that time the rainbow the end of the rainbow was at the other side of the shops across the road from the house at which point I suppose uh, I just got discouraged and I said well that's it that's the end of the crock of gold for me I'm not getting it and I I wearily sadly went home a poorer boy without my crock of gold whoever invented the story was onto something quite real in fact that the crock of gold is at the end of the rainbow in in the sense that if we're chasing the gold we are chasing something which is elusive and which we'll never find in other words we're chasing the kind of happiness that we think is going to be found in the crock of gold we will never find it wealth and possessions the car the dress it, it will never fill the heart and we would just chase it further and further if I had had the maybe the nerve to keep going across the road while well, I'd still be going around the world chasing that little uh, crock of gold so we have to ask ourselves and ask our Lord in this time of prayer because we ought to kind of examine ourselves on the, these questions Lord am I chasing a rainbow am I chasing a non-existent crock of gold convinced that when I get there it will fill me with this happiness that I'm looking for maybe maybe not but we do have to ask ourselves that question am I chasing a rainbow chasing for example you know that I am I'm kind of overly attached to that those possessions that I'm seeking very often for men it tends to be kind of things that uh, make them appear more powerful car you know a more kind of powerful car as if if that that would make me personally a more powerful kind of person for women excuse the stereotypes but very often for women it can be something that we would that a woman might feel would make me more beautiful the uh the, the dress or the accessories the beautiful necklace the earrings and so on that somehow that possession makes me personally a more beautiful creature and that is crock of gold stuff it doesn't really do that to us it doesn't transform us very superficially there's a superficial one there's a big car yeah certainly we get places faster but it doesn't transform us and that's the mistake in chasing that crock of gold now let's go back to the gospel our lord in that gospel passage earlier on he says use money tainted as it is he's not saying he's not saying avoid money avoid possessions not at all our Lord has is, is got his feet on the ground he's God and man so he's not saying money is to be avoided completely at all costs no he says use it as in use it wisely and that is the key to a good relationship with money money is your servant not your master in practice how do we do that well let's ask ourselves with that car that I want to buy that dress that necklace why do I want this do I want this to help me love God more to carry out better my vocation as a as a father or a mother or a son or a worker does that item 
help me to carry out God's plan for me. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede to me.